When I do art since day one, my intention is to make art for anyone, any age and any background, any culture. And I'm trying to find the language of humanity. AI means there may be a danger for humanity. AI means privacy and the free will for humanity can be on stake. But in the meantime, AI can be bringing us a possibility to do things that we couldn't do before. If we are sure about who we are, AI has a major potential for humanity to be helpful for us. I think imagination idea, the idea of seeing the world different, I will say I was eight years old when I get my first computer. But I think truly practicing with algorithms, data, was 2008. So 2008, I also coined the term data painting. It was the very first time I used a custom software and, a, and a basically a sensor, and I was able to see the invisible world of visible. I think since then, 2008, I will say, I feel like I am an artist practicing with data, algorithms, and eventually machine learning. The first question I had was, if a machine can learn, can it hallucinate? Not necessarily a dream, but hallucinate. Because the idea of hallucinations, fantasies and dreams were more inspiring than using AI to mimic reality. So I wasn't inspired or impressed by a machine makes a very real outputs. I, in fact, I was looking for these hallucinations as a mean of experiment. And the second phase was, how can I visualize this latent space, a space that we cannot see, we cannot feel, but mathematically exists? So over the last seven years, which feels like 70 years, we developed many algorithms, many approaches to make this invisible space visible. And we download more than 4 billion images of things that I call collective memories, such as urban, nature, space, and culture, archives of culture. And then I was very much thinking about if one day I could dream or hallucinate, it should be something beyond a simple pigment. It should not dry. It should be constantly changing, shape-shifting, and finding new patterns and forms. So I will say last 10 years, I'm finding this movement in the machine dreams or hallucinations. So this piece specifically, I'm calling it AI data sculpture because of its scale. It is using this trompe l'oeil a two-dimensional world becomes three dimensions. A place we don't know if it's real or not. A feeling that we're the future bringing to us through AI. Because I do believe that the future is all about like discussing what is real or not. So it's a kind of this new uncanny valley of future represented through the machine fantasies and hallucinations. So the process of machine hallucination starts with a significant research. We first look for patterns of these collective memories. We research the name of the national parks, type of species, flora and fauna. And once we understand that, we look for these patterns in the social media and internet in general. And once we find the data, then we spend significant time, sometimes six months of cleaning data, being sure ethically we only look for what we are looking for. And then we train the AI algorithm. And then when AI algorithm trained, which is another like fine tuning, like finding this hallucination state, which is not realistically using AI how it's designed for, finding a new way of using it. And then we create this artistic computation, which is where we see these patterns and forms and creation. I will say it's a multiple stages of research and development, like in a lab of imagination. So first of all, when I do art since day one, my intention is to make art for anyone, any age and any background, any culture. And I'm trying to find the language of humanity. And I do believe that this language is a representation of all our collective memories, 
that can turn to collective dreams and eventually collective consciousness. But to find the similarities in life, I found that nature is one of the theme that truly connect us, that we all appreciate, hopefully, and connect and relate to. That's how it, in my mind, the journey starts. But the nature is so complex. Nature has many, 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 many layers of complexity of biome and flora and fauna. And so it's a very long journey, I will say. And right now in Arcan Museum, the piece behind me is finally is getting a attention from the public. And I'm, I just like had a beautiful photo of its young minds who are curious about AI. I also discussed this morning with an elder person who has rightfully feeling concern about AI. So the piece is starting a dialogue across the genres and disciplines and backgrounds and ages and all finding an inspiration, question and eventually concern about the future where AI may be a problem. So I think shortly we artists are always the alarm mechanisms for humanity. And I'm trying to find this language in my work where the beauty and aesthetics functions with a, do with a doubt and purpose and a true questioning, the tool, the context and discourse, and still appreciate the nature as well. So it's a very fundamental challenge there. But I think it's like life, it's complex. It's, it's, it's not just one egocentric thing, it's much more a collective thinking. And while bringing the purpose and discourse of the work, while bringing attention to the AI, and of course, at the end of the day, try to create an inspiration, joy and hope. So, again, I was eight years old when my mom randomly brought a VHS cassette at home. And I didn't know English back in time. And my cousin was literally explaining the movie to me. And I'm hoping <laughs> his translation is good enough. But this moment that I remember that it, he was saying, in this scene, this human, this android saying that, other android that, these memories are not yours, these are someone else's. So I clearly remember that part, that was a, a massive ins like, inspiration, including the future of Los Angeles, how the beautiful like flying car, between like a media facade of the future. And then I think since then, my connection with science fiction started. And as a child, I didn't see dystopia. I see utopia, and I try to keep, keep that. I try to keep the, seeing the good, seeing the utopia, even in the most darkest dystopic world. Um, it's very hard to keep that mindset because dystopia is so like doomsday scenarios, going to dark side and like feeling you're like, oh, the androids are taking over humanity and we are all in doomsday idea is, I think is kind of our reflex in life. We don't want to fall down. We don't want to hit our heads. It's a very predictable gesture. What is challenge is keeping the child, keeping the utopia, keeping the beauty, the inspiration, joy and hope in life. So when I remember Blade Runner, I always remember being able to see, being able to understand, being an utopic mindset. So I think the, the, this, the Walt Disney Dreams project, WCH, is a very much a dream of mine that I, when I land Los Angeles getting my MFA degree, the first thing I did, like I drove a car to downtown Los Angeles to look for the Blade Runner downtown LA. And it, well, I was very much sad because at 2 a.m. it was a very dark downtown Los Angeles. The building was completely dark. There is nothing. And I was really shocked, like, wow, I thought that this will be the most brightest, most shiniest environment. And since then, actually, I kept that dream in my mind, in my, actually, MFA studies. I was pretty much in my mind to, to one day projection map, give a life to the building. But I think I have like multiple heroes in my life. I love to remember my heroes, honor them and remember who they are because we all are on the shoulders of many giants and remembering our giants and defining our giants are a very important part of life. And I know that one day Frank Gehry is building and Azaha did it and Gaudi. These are my three heroes in architecture. And I'm very fortunate and grateful that I was able to work of these three uh, heroes of humanity, and I was able to work.
Walt Disney Dreams project was an, an agrad study, starting with um, imagination that one day the buildings may dream and hallucinate. So we were able to basically get a hundred years of every single performance, every single music, video, image, sound, text, any information we can find in the LA Phil archives became a story, a narrative on the building facade. An incredible repertoire of hundred years. And then for each different genre, like a sound, image and text, we try to analyze this data with AI to symbolize all the recordings to hear all the Mahlers, to hear all the Beethovens and Mozarts across the time. And then we also use the image archive to let AI to hallucinate new performing arts, new forms. Um, so it's a, almost a one year of research that, that took us to before we materialized this hundred years of data, the memories of the building. We use 42 different projectors and completely cover the compound curve of Frank Gehry's signature cultural beacon and give a life to the building, to the skin of the building, as Frank Gehry mentions, a, a new perspective. It was a free, open, public art project and brought more than 100,000 people in Los Angeles in 2018. I, th I think the artist is me, artist is human. It's a human, but it's machine assisted. I believe here AI is an extension of my mind. AI is supporting the journey to give a discourse and context. AI is there to support the, the ideas that I cannot perceive myself when it comes to all the photos of the nature or like this deep exploration of context. Um, but I do believe it's a 50%, 50% collaboration, co-creation, which I do believe is a very important keyword where the future blink brings us. So my attitude is purposeful. I don't know if it's negative or positive, but I don't want to sound visual thinker. I don't want to sound positive thinker. I think AI means there may be a danger for humanity. AI means privacy and the free will for humanity can be on stake. So I want to be very clear about that part. But in the meantime, AI can be bringing us a possibility to do things that we couldn't do before. AI means that we can cure some problems of like disease. We can find solutions for things we couldn't find yet. So AI has a, a lot of potential for us. But I want to be also careful that it brings ethical problems. It brings unexpected solutions, it brings inequalities, it brings other problems. So I want to be super open about both sides. In my work, I am using it as an advantage because I, I, I can't draw properly, but I know how to dream in my mind the forms. I know how to compute and, and geometrically, mathematically create things. So it, it's helping me to become an extension of my mind. But I know that the same tool can be a problem for humanity. So. Being open about the things may go wrong, but still don't lose the possibilities is, I think, my ultimate view. And at the end of the day, I think AI is just a mirror. And we as humanity has to question who we are. And if we are good, it will be good. And I believe in humanity and I am in the good side. Uh, and I believe still this is a major possibility for humanity to question creativity, to question what is real. Yes but it also has a major possibility for us to find solutions that we couldn't find yet. Again, it's just a mirror. We just need to ask the questions we need. And if, if we are sure about who we are, it's, it's, it will be very, very helpful for us. I, th I think we didn't have a time to discuss this yet. I think the AI is progressing very fast. I am using AI in my work for seven years. It feels like 70 years. Like let's imagine an artist using a brush, a pigment and a canvas. Most likely every morning, the artist reaching the same tool, same canvas, different ideas, yes. But the tool is the same. For me, every morning I woke up and 
oh my God, the AI is changed again. The tools is now obsolete. Like what, like that feeling of uncomfortable zone is where I inspire from. That makes me alive. That makes me be up to date and understand the future. But it's maybe too much for people. This may be a lot of thinking and a lot of like perspective that is not easy to maintain in a world of extra fast world. So I don't believe we, we have enough time to digest, to understand, to discuss and to define where and why and how AI can be purposeful and meaningful for humanity. So that's the reason I'm saying I'm not a wishful thinker. I think we still have to debate and talk and ask new questions about the purpose of AI for humanity. So it was 2016 when I was so lucky working with, you know, AI engineers and like in California, close to like Silicon Valley, believing the technology and so on. But I was also able to go to Istanbul to see my uncle, to my family. And that's when I learned that he was diagnosed by Alzheimer's. He forgot where I'm coming from and where I was. It was a very hit. It was a very emotionally very hit because I was so much shocked that the world around me was proposing a solution to everything. But at the end of the day, my uncle or people with Alzheimer's, were, their memories were melting, disappearing. And since that day, I was deeply inspired, but also questioned, how can we preserve our memories, most important data for us, without breaching privacy, encrypt them in the form of art? that I hope well protected from the problems of society. And also appreciate the moment of remembering, just understand that moment. So I'm so grateful for our collaborator, Professor Adam Gasly of UCSF, an incredible neuroscientist writing games, creating games to, to cure ADHD and depression and anxiety. And, his and his, him and his team allowed us to uh, train and learn how to use brain signals and, and skin conductance, body temperature and heartbeat data to, to classify and learn the moment of remembering. By researching for a significant time and also our friends at Neuroelectrics and incredible researchers have invented an incredibly um, clinically approved uh, brain signal sensor, we were able to classify the moment of remembering to just honor my uncle that that heavy emotional connection, but also we create a tool for scientists that they can use in the clinic research. So it's, it's not only just creating an artwork, but also creating a tool for scientists, a true art, science and technology collaboration. I think melting memories is one of the most um, profound experience when I felt the artwork on a large scale wall. It was basically using the brain signals and turning into like noise algorithm. That's, that's, that's the computer graphics context. But when you remember that those signals are created by a memory of, of, of someone, and that's just something different. I think it's the function of art, the power of art. If you're on the surface, you just see a bunch of like technological breakthroughs or nerd things that are algorithms or called things. But the depth, that's where the profound connection with mind and soul happens. And I was just first time truly touched by not only me, but our audience who have like dementia, Alzheimer's or, or people around them that are affected by this disease. Um, so there was one, one profound connection with my audience. And I remember very well, I got thousands of messages when the work was around the world and how, it, how, I, how actually I learned that Alzheimer's and dementia is a very large problem for society. I mean, I, th I think the future is holding multiple challenges. First of all, we will be questioning creativity. We will be questioning reality. And I think we will be looking for who will define what is real. Who will be the, like the, the authority that will help us to define the reality. I think, I think the blur, it will get more blurry. I don't believe we will be eventually defined man-made or mission-made. But my inner voice feels that man -made, a human-made world, it still will be desirable. And I know that there's this fear of like what happens if human-made things are not anymore desirable. 
I understand that concern. But my predictions are not necessarily that. In fact, human creativity will be absolutely always an authentic, maybe nostalgic, but authentic as well. But I'm not doing this for just a shiny pixels or just beauty and aesthetics. That's one thing, of course, which is important. Designing the canvas, designing the algorithm, the feeling. But I'm trying to create a safe and secure space first, showing where data comes from, which algorithm we use, and just create that safety and secure space. And second layer, I'm really hoping people to like question and feel confronted with where we may be going with a secure and safe space, not concerns, not doubts, not negativity. I'm trying to find a new ways of communication about the future. And lastly, and most importantly, the well-being. I do believe the world and the life is heavy. I do believe the life is bringing problems and not always solutions. While this work is not a solution, but I do hope it's a perspective to feel connected, hopefully, collectively, not necessarily individually, because the other challenge of the current technologies are offering us a very individual perspective. Being alone with a machine, a TV on our face, I don't believe is an ultimate solution. So the work is, I hope, bringing communities around it to sit together, to contemplate, question in the most hopefully open-minded possible. And, and I'm really one day dreaming that these artworks can be a tool for well-being for the mind. I mean, I am getting incredible messages across the world, like someone's lost, someone's grief, someone's problems in life. Somehow they feel that's healing. The artwork is healing someone's mind and soul. And I think it's a very grateful moment for artists that when we connect with someone's mind and soul, we have a chance to heal that person. And when you get that message back across the world, that's where I found the meaning of the art the purpose of the art.